right, so a few things you need to know about me. So uh, we're working with um, enterprise organizations. Uh, we are working with a large brand at the moment on some AR, VR pieces and a studio. And, and how uh, the, the capacity that I work in is I help teams craft and hone and test and uh, nail their, their user experience. For me, like if VR and, and AR are not emotionally compelling, then there's no point. I've been in this field for 22 years, and um, I did my initial work on collaborative virtual environments, so social VR. And so in this talk, I am going to talk about storytelling. And I'm also gonna blend it with the track, if anybody attended yesterday's VR for Good, um, you should join the Virtual World Society, kind of lend your support. I'm gonna talk about some of those themes. And my real agenda is that we need to move the goalposts in this field and in the work that we're doing. So the way that you approach your uh, designs is, is gonna be really relevant in this talk. Can I see a show of hands of, how many people are familiar with user experience UX? Okay, how, how, many, how many of those people are working in the field, are doing something with UX? Awesome. Okay, and um, great, great, thank you guys. So here's the thing that, the, the difference, when I was uh, attending conferences in the mid 90s <laughs> and working in usability of VR, the thing that wasn't there, right? So we, a lot of the discussions, it's really weird, all these discussions and demos and all this stuff were happening like 25 years ago. There are books written on the topic of VR therapy and VR training and things like that that really got me interested. But the thing that was missing was storytelling. And storytelling turns out to be an extremely important part of user experience with spatialized spaces. Um, Reconta-me una storia que dia la pelle de oca. Are there any Italians in here, by the way? Did I get that right? Okay, good. No Italians today. Um, tell me a story that gives me goosebumps is what that means. It's an Italian expression that I just learned, and I thought it was relevant. Um, but I think what they're talking about is fear. A lot of VR looks like this. Oh, my animated GIFs are not loading here. <laughs> it's a problem with the PDF um, version. Uh, this is an actual thing and there's like these people that come after you. Um, fear is really easy to do as an emotion in VR, but what else do you got for me? There's a lot of fear that's used in VR creations. It's really easy. Politicians know you can manipulate fear, right? The best politicians know this. Um, and it's kind of like the low level of emotion. There's a whole spectrum of emotions that we can tap into. From emotion design, we know that surprise is like the number one emotion that resonates with uh, users. Um, there are other emotions as well, like delight and curiosity. These are harder to design for, but we need to raise that bar. Um, this is the other one too, and it's an animated GIF, so. <laughs> I'll animate it for you. It's bang, 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 right? Um, there was a talk yesterday in here, I think it was, Nathan Shedroff, and did anybody see that? Anybody see that talk that he gave about the blockchain and the uh, bot, econ uh, bot economy? Kind of interesting talk, but one of the things that he mentioned was using science fiction to prototype good user experience with blockchain and, bot and, this, and bots bot user experience. It turns out that, that what we were doing in the 1970s, we as a society, we were watching Star Trek, we were imagining new solutions. And we need to do that again, like quickly. Um, so one thing that Nathan Shedroff, by the way, didn't mention yesterday was that he wrote a book on this topic called Make It So. Um, and the topic is using sci-fi as a way to imagine new UX solutions because science fiction, specifically Star Trek being the big one, the, there's like 10 inventions that star, the Star Trek writers made up and we have nailed like eight of those. We have proof of concepts of, of some of the physics, edge physics stuff 
And then the things like this, the, the communicator, the cell phone, these are all imagined things from a TV show. But we collectively like imagine them together. And so sci-fi as a way for you to prototype, very, very important. Um, this is why um, we need to do this really quickly. And that 13 million people a year die from pollution. Uh, Americans throw away 50 million drinking straws daily. I just tried to recycle something out there and I noticed there was all kinds of garbage in it. I've just been in Asia and in, in uh, China and, and uh, uh, Korea and uh, Japan. They recycle consistently in Asia in all three of those countries, consistently, which is really cool. You know, you're in a city of 29 million people and there's recycling available everywhere. We don't do that in the US. When I travel the rest of the world, I don't see that. We throw away 13 million tons of plastic every year in the US. We need to start imagining new solutions like really quickly to some of these problems. Um, so that's, that's the significance of the VR for good track, by the way, and the, VR, the virtual world society that's putting that on. So what is this, this medium? I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Uh, first person narrative, right? It's the fact that all of a sudden now I'm changing my perceptual position from third person to first person. And that does something in the brain. Um, we, can, we can transcend uh, our, our understanding with that first person uh, perspective. And we can do interactive storytelling. And we can, we can use story mechanics, right, to make things a lot more interesting, uh, just like those, those Star Trek movies made them. Um, but for me, story becomes part of the UI. And I'm talking about one thing that nobody talks about is B2B. B2B storytelling, like for, for AR and VR. Like, like B2B is like, oh, it's boring, there's no story here, that's for entertainment. I'm not talking, to, to me, stories, entertainment, oh yeah, of course, of course, Pixar, cool. I teach Pixar storytelling methods in, um, uh, in my classes. And one of the, uh, one of the um, uh, classes that, that, that I teach, uh, we've now taught VR, AR, UX design practices to 2,000 designers and developers globally. Um, so there's a place for it, but storytelling is, um, uh, is key in all, in all your UX efforts. Now, this is all about presence, right? There are different degrees of presence. It, it's, it's nuanced. Um, the bottom line here is the more immersion you give the user, the more presence you give them. And what's the key to presence and immersion? Story. So that's something that I didn't get when I was studying VR in the 90s. I was like, that wasn't discussed at all. Um, story as a UI element is critical, is critical. Um, let's see, we're going the other direction here. All right, so what does it do from a UX design perspective? It gives the user cues. It gives the user um, uh, ways to, to know what to do next, for example. So instead of we were talking, I was just um, doing some prototyping outside behind this building over the lunch break. <laughs> and um, with, with uh, uh, Dr. Patty Novick, who's working on a, a project in Chicago to bring the stories of uh, Latino communities and African-American communities. Um, and she said, there's a door. And you go through that. And I was like, well, what do you do with the door? You know, so is there some, some light coming through the door? Is there music coming through the door? Um, what is that, you know, where does the story begin and how does the story wrap you around that experience in that first person perspective, right? Um, so it can also spark emotions, right? So you, you might hear music in the distance. Remember, sound is very, very important for immersion and for story. So you can just tell a story. I'm not, today I'm not going to show you like a demo or in a project. Or, um, but one of the things that I worked on is called Sound Space, and it's for bringing blind users into immersive environments with sound. So using sound as a navigation aid. Um, you can just tell a story with sound by spatialized audio. Having audio, you know, you can pull people in, and we even have a social VR um, piece in that. In that uh, uh, I presented at Spatial User Interfaces last year, if you're interested, looking that up. Um, so guiding discovery and inducing immersion. And the whole, the whole point is to deepen presence. Presence is how we measure that. Think about this picture here, that you know, in the real world, there's like, imagine if you had to go up and sit with this crowd of people, right? 
that the people there, people are, there are some people here are not present, they're in their phones, right? And for me, the whole reason why I think this technology is here is to help make us smarter. That's, I think, the reason why Facebook uh, grabbed onto VR, because Facebook really sucks as a social networking experience, and I think they know that. Um, and VR allows presence. It gets you back into, you know, instead of just likes and scrolls and this low context communication, um, which is okay, you know, I do it too and it's fine, but VR allows for presence. It allows for us to go, hey, let me tell you about that. Let me, let me take you on my trip to Zanzibar and go to that beach where I found this broken piece of uh, glass that is from a, uh, an ancient ship that was uh, uh, cruising across the, um, uh, the East African coast, you know, uh, 700 years ago. And we, there we are together, and there's the pirate on the ship, and you know, and that's very different from just showing you a picture. Um, but what this creates is like tension. Some people are so there's different people doing different things, and and that tension becomes like the basis for us uh, telling stories. We need to get beyond demos and games, and and maybe even just awareness pieces. This is my challenge for this conference: is you know we're really good at doing empathy pieces in this medium. We're really good at it, but getting past that, uh, getting past that is really important. What do I mean by that? I mean imagining the solution. You know, not just like, oh, the planet's in peril, we're using plastic, it's all falling apart, but, but actually like being like, you know, you, you put on an experience and you go, wow, like look at all these wind farms and look at look what's happening now with instead of plastic, we're using these, like actually visualizing future solutions. Like, because for me, this technology is an imagination expanding technology. And bless the folks there um, that created Rick and Morty's the number one VR experience uh, last, uh, last year, I think this year as well. And the guys who created that, Alchemy Labs, Google bought them last year. Um, if you wanna study good UX, check that out. Uh, but as Brenda Laurel, who's the grandmother of virtual reality, she was speaking on the first day. I don't know if anybody saw her. Did anybody see Brenda Laurel? Do you know who Brenda Laurel, does anybody know who Brenda Laurel is? Um, she has a, a, a book called Computers as Theater. She's been working in the field for like 30, 40 years. Um, she said that a lot of the problem with our, our approach to design of this medium is we're stuck in the game context. And I was like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yes. Because the point of this is to entertain. And to me, this isn't just about entertainment. Um, it's taken me a long while to get to this understanding, by the way, this is, I didn't come to that easily, um, that it's not about the technology. It's not about, all that technology we see out there is just, it looks so cool, we're so impressed with it, it's gonna go away. It's about extending human capabilities. And, um, and so here's, this is a meta too, they're demoing, there's a huge line out there. Uh, that we, when we mesh with the real world, we expand imagination, we create story out of everyday things and we deepen immersion. Um, there's that spatial tension that I mentioned again, and, but it can be overpowering as well. You know, that's why like these fear pieces, you don't wanna like scare people because then they'll never use your experience again. Okay, what it's about is this, and there's Brenda Laurel, by the way. Um, it's about imagination. It, instead of XR, let's call it IR, you know, imagine, imagining reality. Because that's what it is, it's an imagination expanding technology, to be clear. So we need new narratives. Is, is one of my theses here. So here's, here's one, I guess it's an animated GIF. 60% um, increase in task performance in general with spatialized UIs, but bear in mind that you can lie with statistics. Uh, there's a reason why a lot of the large uh, manufacturers are not telling you the task performance with their training apps and so forth. Have you heard any stats in the industry? It's really hard to find them. Um, there's a reason for that, but very powerful for learning anatomy for example, with HoloLens. Check this out though, this is from the medical literature, 27 studies, they reviewed the effectiveness of AR and there's a lack of evidence to date. This is from NIH, from the medical field, but, but um, the future, and this doesn't exist, but for me, if you can take actual people's data, their labs, and, and drop it into an, an AR, VR experience, if, you can, if you're a smoker, for example, and you can fly through your, your lungs, or if you're doing some unhealthy habit and you can see the inside of your actual body with labs, that's what I'm talking about imagining the future and changing the narrative, 
right? Not just visualizing somebody else's heart, but your heart with obesity or your heart with, uh, um, you know, stomach cancer or whatever, whatever uh, uh, lifestyle thing that you can change, for example. Um, this is Britton Heller's talk. Did anybody see that one uh, yesterday? Okay, one person. <laughs> um, they found that when they, they gave this to people, to, to educators of hate crimes, they were able to see the data differently. This impacts decision making. This is what I'm talking about. Or the border wall. USA Today has an immersive journalism uh, team and they, they map the border wall and it's like they're telling stories there. I think somebody else did a piece just to show how dumb it was in like VR. You know, decision making, should we spend billions of dollars? Or cop decision making, their simulators used for the police, we have a real problem. You know, Starbucks throwing people out. Airbnb, did anybody hear about Ziggy Marley, uh, Bob Marley's uh, granddaughter that was, um, did you hear, anybody hear that story? A couple, three weeks, four weeks ago, they were coming out of an Airbnb and somebody called the cops. Three black women filmmakers with just bags leaving their Airbnb and the cops were called on them. And they brought a helicopter and they did the whole like thing, right? Um, Starbucks, same thing a few weeks ago. Um, it's a couple black guys using the bathroom and the police are called and now Starbucks is trying to backpedal to under. So we have, so we, we need to also improve our decision making. When you're looking out your window and you're looking at Airbnb people leaving, don't call the cops just because the people look different. Okay, sorry. Um, teaching ecological intelligence. Uh, we saw Honeybee yesterday here being presented. Um, VR for impact, great Facebook uh, project. This is what I'm talking about and also visualizing air pollution. Uh, this is from Public VR Lab. Uh, it's called There's Something in the Air and a Way to Visualize Pollution. So this is personal to me. I live in Portland. We have the worst air in the country. You probably don't think of that when you think of Portland. Most people in Portland don't even realize this. Um, this is Chris Milk who talked about uh, VR as an empathy machine. And um, uh, this is Clouds Over Cedra, which is a, uh, the... Um, uh, refugee camps, and he's at Davos of the UN. So these decision makers, these suits that just sit inside the UN and they never get out into the refugee camps, actually seeing things from a young girl's perspective, they were like, wow, you know, so in terms of impacting people's decision making. This one as well from Cedar sinai 24% reduction in pain. Now most of the stats, like how far can we move with this, between uh, 12 to 30% roughly in terms of uh, affecting outcomes with training and so forth. But if you create a piece like this, for me as a UX designer, uh, if you create a piece like this that is boring and is just a hologram or a visualization, then you miss the point. Because the point is magic, the point is emotion, the point is expanding our imagination. Just like Einstein said, it's more important than knowledge, right? So, um, and this is interesting that you get 20 seconds and three to five minutes, which is like how much time I have left. The, um, Cognitive immersion and then physiological where your body starts feeling it. This is, from, this is from the largest medical study, but this is what I'm talking about with regard to um, impacting decision making that even, you know, we can still, the, the reaction from the staff in the medical uh, institution are, are, is overwhelmingly positive. People are intrigued by this technology. The imagination is being opened up, so let's feed it with storytelling. Um, how, like from a UX perspective, uh, helps us map the path, the goal. It gives us triggers to start the experience and task triggers to guide the experience. And, and it acts like that wrapper to give us relevancy for me. Um, it's all about um, adding to presence and making that experience meaningful. Otherwise, who cares? Um, thank you so much. so much, Frank. Um, I have an upcoming uh, UX design boot camp if you want to learn how to do uh, UX and storytelling in 3D. Does anyone have questions? We have a couple minutes for questions. Questions. Be brave. I see some people. Or comments. Questions? Is, is this, in, uh, how many people found this interesting? <laughs> uh, how many people found it useful? Okay, okay. cool. Strong, positive <laughs> response rate. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, yes. So in VR experiences, what your vision, how do you see the different interaction mechanisms 
in UX for or a, from a good UX perspective versus how we do it in a traditional computer screen? Um, I think what you're asking is what's the difference between like 2D and 3D? Like, and then what's the, how are they different? And is that what you're asking? Clicking buttons, pulling levers. Yeah. Or gestures. Yeah. Well, so the really fun thing about this technology, because I've worked in two, I, I started out in 3D and then I went into 2D and web, web applications, mobile, and then kind of back into, into 3D and I work on 2D as well. So I, you know, work on both sides. Um, of the <laughs> both sides of the, the multi-dimensional problem. The, the, the difference I think is with 2D, it's, it's static. You have to guide the user with big things like buttons or menus. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, uh, it's the difference between writing down something and reading it versus actually telling somebody uh, about it, you know, maybe your vacation or something like that. And so it's, it's, to me, it's, it's that part of the, the experiential embodiment of that. Um, but look, storytelling is how our brains are wired. We are wired for story. So uh, the way that you do that, the difference, you can't really tell a story that well on a website. What are we doing now? Video. So we're using video, uh, heavily augmenting with video, which is like a TV paradigm. But Steven Spielberg said this is one of the most dangerous technologies out, out there. And then he said, and the reason I say that is he said because before, you used to control the narrative as a, a filmmaker. You'd control the user and then carefully, like I'm directing you, and then, oh, here's this tension, and then all of a sudden, this thing happens, and then now it's to the end, and then it's like, right? If you saw that Pixar talk on storytelling, the keynote, there's a reason why that was a keynote. Um, with VR, you can't do that. The user then can change their, if you design it that way, right? They can change their agency, their ability to act on the world and move things around and maybe start at the end and go, oh my God, you know, like the tree, I showed tree there, the uh, M VR for impact. Um, I, I believe that's the piece where um, uh, Brenda Laurel uh, mentioned this as well in her panel that it, you're in a forest and the forest is burning down, but instead of giving a, a dystopian, a sad fear, despair, you know, which is, would be easy. It'd be easy to be like, oh look, let's feel bad about the forest. Um, burning down, or because I think NASA predicts that by uh, in in seventy in seventy years, a hundred percent of our of the for the uh, uh, rainforest will be gone on the planet. That's the NASA estimate, which is why I think we need to change the narrative, right? And not just be entertained by like just running around a tree, um, but actually imagining solutions to uh, uh, to change that. So it includes intel uh, you know ecology, uh, um, em empathy, and all those important things. But one of the things they did in Tree was they made it so that you have to find solutions to stop the forest from burning. So you have to you know, do things like, uh, you know, things that will help. Like, um, so change, that's an example of that change narrative. You can't do that in 2D very easily. Um, but the opportunities are great to, to create em emotion in, in this medium that you also cannot do very easily in 2D. Though, though you, you, know, you can get close, and, yeah. and mobile as well, you can get close for sure, okay. mobiles. Thank <laughs> you.